Father, we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. More of you, we pray. More, more, more of you. Thank you. We are before you with our vessels. More, more, more of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please clap and as you take your seats. Please take your seats. Hallelujah. I thank God so much for making it possible for me to be here. Somebody died yesterday night. Someone died this morning. At 6 o'clock, somebody also died. 7 o'clock, somebody died. Just this very moment, somebody took his last breath and died. I'm very, very grateful that I'm here. Give a clap to God that you are still alive. Amen. Our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 12, verses 1 to 4. Mose huma ordin kain. Mose wulu e wulu. Mose wulu. Ken klen le. Aha, na kain. Mose fagban le banto. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country and from your family and from your father's house and to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Say Amen. Our second Bible reading is from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 to 21. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who, whom he believed. God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist, though they did. But Abraham, then he said, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since, since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith or strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded or convinced that he who had promised he was also able to perform it. Say Amen. Our third Bible reading is from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 11, from 17 to 19. It says that by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding or accounting or reckoning that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense say amen god bless the reading of his words hallelujah this means we are talking about actualizing the blessings of abraham and um, when you look at Things like that. Number one, actualizing. What does that mean? What do we mean by to actualize? Basically, it means to make something actual, real. Bring something from an intangible state to a tangible state.
tangible state. It means to activate, to become, to manifest, and to fulfill. So when we talk about actualizing, it means that there is something that we have we've not laid hands on yet. We want that thing to become a reality. Hallelujah. It means that there's something that we've been, maybe we've been talking about it, we've been, we've, we've been discussing it, but we've not really, really handled it. You want to handle it. Hallelujah. So if you are talking about actualizing the blessings of Abraham, then it presupposes that Abraham was a blessed man. Hallelujah. Then it means that Abraham was blessed. That is the only reason why we want to actualize something that Abraham had. Hallelujah. The story we read talks about Abraham. The first one in Genesis chapter 12. Talks about the father God called Abraham from his father's house, from his family, and gave him a word, a promise. And Abraham got up and began to move. Hallelujah. And the promise was that God is going to bless him. Verse 2. Said that you bless him. You make his name great. And make him a blessing. And in him shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So to Abraham. The promise was given. And over time. Abraham obeyed this word. He just got up and followed this command and moved to the land of Canaan. And we hear about all the things that happened to Abraham. And finally, finally, the promise that was given to him, he attained unto it. Say amen. So, for us, what it means is that if somebody is blessed, it means that the person has got to the, to the point that others are benefiting from his blessing hallelujah because he said that you make him a blessing and in him shall all the families of the earth be blessed so if others are not thanking god for your life then you are not blessed yet hallelujah if somebody doesn't wake up and say thank god for pastor neil that day, if not for this pastor oh i wouldn't have been where i am then my friend you are getting blessed hallelujah if somebody wake up and say that if not for pastor ben then it means you are getting blessed hallelujah abraham was so blessed and this is the account that the servant gave of him that the lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great genesis 24 verse 35 and he has given him flocks and heads, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. Genesis 24, 35. So the servant was talking about Abraham. And he said that the Lord has blessed my master greatly. And he has become great. When the Lord blesses you, you surely will become great. Hallelujah. When the Lord blesses you, you surely will become great. And this man became great. When you read other verses, it says that the man became prosperous. He became wealthy. And he, he, he had, he, God has given him flocks, heads, silver, gold, men servants, maid servants, camels, and asses. He had jaguar. You know jaguar? Those days, those were the jaguars. Hallelujah. He has camels and asses. He has gold and silver. I pray the day that I will have gold in abundance so that I can spend my silver with careless abandon. If you have gold, you can spend silver without thinking. But if all you have is silver, you must be careful. Hallelujah. So this is a testimony of him. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. The blessing makes it rich. The blessings of the Lord, it makes people rich. It has the power to prosper you. Hallelujah. But the blessing transcends the physical riches. 
So God bless him. And he became great. As a result of the blessing, the man increased in things. Hallelujah. It is the power or the enabler. So the blessing transcends the physical things. Proverbs 10, 22 says that the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich. Hallelujah. When you take away the physical evidence, the blessing has the power to produce another evidence. Hallelujah. So when you take away the things that you think are the blessing, the blessing itself is intangible, but it has the power to produce tangible things. Hallelujah. That is why Lot missed it all together when he chose the seemingly well-watered lands. Lot was going with Abraham. All the time that he was following this man, he was not understanding the spiritual dynamics of the things. So when the time came that the old man said, the way we are going, we are becoming too big, you choose. The, the young man looked at the well-watered lands and chose that. He did not know that the blessing is not in the physical. It is in the spiritual. Hallelujah. So many of us are chasing the physical things. The blessing is not the physical. It is the intangible. When you have it, the physical will manifest. Hallelujah. So seek after the blessing. Seek the power. Seek the anointing. Hallelujah. Today we all lay claims on Abraham's blessing. In today's world, three major religions call Abraham their father. For us Christians, he is the father of our faith. He is the father of faith. Indeed, in him are all the families of the earth blessed. Say amen. So all of us sing the song, Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hoping and yearning that we too our lives will be transformed. Hallelujah. But I've realized that many have sung that song. But alas, we've sung it many, many times. But we look at ourselves. We are far away from the blessings that I read about Abraham. Hallelujah. So I've realized that it is not in singing Abraham's blessings am I. You've been singing it all this while, but I'm not seeing anything. Say amen. The question is how do we partake in this blessing? Tell somebody partake in the blessing. Hallelujah. Partake in the blessing. So this, this evening, I will just share two key things. I hope I can end quickly. Number one, learn to trust God. Hallelujah. Learn to trust God. In Hebrews eleven seventeen, 17, we say that by faith Abraham, when he was tested, Abraham had faith. And it's, it's amazing how the scripture puts it. That even to the point that God said, this song that you've been praying for, believing God and all that, now bring me this song and I'm going to sacrifice him for me. Abraham still believed. Verse 19, Bible says that Abraham, accounting God, was able to raise him up. Hallelujah. I call it aggressive faith. Hebrews 11 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. May I suggest to you that you need some aggressive faith. You need some gra, -gra faith. You are too gentle. Hallelujah. God was telling me something. He said that if you want to grow, my son, you must be aggressive. If you want to grow, you must be aggressive. You are too docile. You are too nice. May you be aggressive. Hallelujah. I say, may you be aggressive. Has God said it? Has God said it? 
You must believe that once God has said it. Numbers 23 verse 19. That God is not a man. Blah, blah, blah. Has God said it? Has God said it? Once God has said it, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? And shall he not do it? Has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? You must have an aggressive faith. God's way will surely come to pass. But see, your deception is that you think because God has said something to you, whether you sleep, whether you, you don't believe, it will still come to pass. Everything God says is universal. So if you don't partake in it, somebody else will partake in it. Hallelujah. So when God wanted to raise a family, he decided to start, start with Abraham. If Abraham hadn't obeyed, God would have found somebody else. Hallelujah. The word of God is to those who hold on to it. Those who aggressively believe. They will not just say that I know my redeemer live it. They will say that and I know he shall come to rescue me. They will not merely say that I know my redeemer live it. No. They will know, they will say also that he shall come to my rescue. To them, my redeemer live it will not be a mere sign on Nyamiche Dakuma bound trotro. It will be active, real. Hallelujah. So they wake up. Even though things are not the way they want, they still say, I know my Redeemer live it. I know that it shall be well with me. I am not dying like this. No. I call it total dependence on God. It must consume you. The thing you are talking about doesn't consume you yet. Proverbs 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all, 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 all of your heart not some of your heart trust in the lord with all of your heart hallelujah so you must be aggressive in faith amen abraham was totally consumed because i don't know what he had but the man got up and started moving if it's you you'll be asking questions hallelujah the man was just aggressive. Can you imagine? Even at the point that he, he, he reckoned that God is able to raise the son back. Can you imagine? Aggressively believing that even though, I, my, my, like Job, even though my body fades, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I won't die this way. Hallelujah. I know. He was totally consumed. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Neither did he consider the weakness of his own body. Hallelujah. Sarah has passed monopause. Abraham has passed papa pause. Hallelujah. If there's monopause, there's papa pause. Yet still he believed. Hallelujah. He concluded that God can raise him up. He had the faith that even if he killed him, God will raise him up. My friend, increase your faith level. Be aggressive in faith. All these years, all your plans, all the things you've been believing God for. Not because you are not aggressive. Hallelujah. If God said that he will rain rain upon your land, you must be, be, be preparing the land. You must wake up tilling the land believing god for the rain hallelujah you don't go and sleep and say that oh the lord will bless me the lord would i've seen food that have done that many years they are still the same hallelujah you must aggressively believe jesus says if only thou can believe if only 
If only you can believe all things, not some things. All things are possible. Hallelujah. All things are possible. Many years ago, I just believed these words of God. I was young, little, frail, with a little neck and, and a big. But I believed them. I believed the words of the Lord. I held on to them. I trusted these words. I had the faith enough to believe it is well with me. Those days I used to walk in town and I would scream, it is well with me. And everybody would look at me. I said, take it easy. Hallelujah. I would scream, it is well. It is well. I would scream, it is well. I am a great man. It is well. It is well. I just believed it. I just believed it. Because I remember when we were going to school, you had to carry your own table and your own chair to school. The table we've eaten at the night before on the same table. So sometimes when they carry it, the fat tree will still be. On. Have you carried table to school before? Carry your own table and chair. You put the books inside. Hallelujah. But I just believe it. That I will not remain like that. No. I believe that God was taking me somewhere. And I believe still that he's taking me somewhere. I know that it is well with me. I know that things will not be like this forever. I know that one day I'll bring money here. I'm telling you one day I'll bring money in a sack. Dollars. And come and leave it on this altar. I will tell them, let's go. They will carry it behind me. Because I've become big small, so I won't carry it myself. Say, where are we going? You follow me. Come, put it here. You can go. Hallelujah. You must believe it. Amen. You must believe it. Once God said it. You see, when God speaks... I was preaching almost the same thing on Saturday. And I said that we, have, we had three children. And God told us our children were four. My wife had three CS. So on the third one, they did tuba ligation. Is that not how they call it? Ligation or whatever they call it. But the fourth one still came. You must believe God enough that what he says, he will do it. When the prophet told me that the children they were four, we were laughing at him. But when, when my wife had a dream that she, she, she woke up and she realized she has a baby. No, God can do everything. Then I say that whether they've tied the thing or not, the baby is still coming. Hallelujah. You must believe God. The problem is that you don't believe God aggressively enough. Hallelujah. You don't believe God aggressively enough. You think you are okay. You are not okay. Because we need money. If you are okay, we wouldn't have been suffering. Hallelujah. You are not okay. Somebody, they are just joking. The friend told him that, Mumu, Masri, Mumu, Niska. The man said, Oh, I sent Benauka. Then he called the pastor. That same day, he registered the bus and sent it to the church. So, you, you've not reached there. I'm talking about bus, not a uh, not van, bus. 40 something sita. Hallelujah. If you are blessed by now, we would have conquered all this place. Amen. So we are not blessed yet. We don't have enough. Stop worrying because you are thinking about your two and a half children. That's why you think you are blessed. You should be thinking about the whole world. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Let me move on. So trust the Lord. Trust him. Believe God aggressively. Believe God. When God says something, believe it. Believe it. Amen. Believe it. So I just believe God. Because there was nobody to look up to. There was nobody to look up to. I remember I was very small when my father passed and I was telling everybody they should not cry. But one day I read in the Bible, he is the father to the fatherless. And I became excited. And then God asked me, he and my father, which one is better? I said, I choose you, my Lord. Hallelujah. You must believe God. Oh. Your problem is that you are not believing God well enough. Amen. Number two, you must obey him. To have faith is to obey. Your obedience is the evidence of your faith. Hallelujah. I say your obedience is the evidence of your faith. If you are not obeying, you are telling lies. You don't have any faith. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. Genesis 17. Listen, God spoke to Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Then God appeared. Now when God came, God said, now I, I want to show you something. For you to really have this son that you want to have, you must be circumcised. That time, Abraham has gone around he had Ishmael. Ishmael was already 13 years. God said, if you want this thing to happen, you must be circumcised. Hey. You know what circumcision means? To cut your bolo bolo. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, chapter 17, verse 22. So, Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all who were born in his house, and all the servants, blah, 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 and circumcised them that very same day. When God spoke to him, if it's me, I won't do it that day. <laughs> Hallelujah. That same day. That same day. That same day. If it's me, I will do Ishmael. So that I will see how the healing. You have to use wisdom now. That is why we are suffering. Hallelujah. If it's me, that's how I behave. We are using wisdom. Don't be a fool. Oh. It's not only you that is a Christian. You see where you are still? You are not seeing anything. Hallelujah. That same day, Abraham got circumcised. That same day. So Abraham was 99 years old when he circumcised himself. 99 years. Do you know what it means? Me, when I was young, you'd be circumcised around 6, 7, 8. They use one zam knife. When they finish, you wear jokutu. <laughs> and you walk like this. Hallelujah. 99 years that same day now listen to the shocker after that in chapter 18 he said that abraham was sitting under the mamre trees it means that the thing was just about dying it, in the heat of the day the spirit just told me that that was just when the wound was healing and the angel of the lord appeared to him after he has carried out a circumcision. Your problem is that you are not obeying. Amen. Then he came to confirm his word when he met when the men came, and they gave him a sure word. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year. 
and Sarah shall have a son. Hallelujah. So it means that when Abraham was not circumcised, his firing was not firing. Hallelujah. Your firing is not firing because you are not circumcised. You are not obedient. Hallelujah. So in the next year, Abraham had the son. Say, wow. Abraham again demonstrated his obedience by his willingness to offer Isaac. Chapter number 22. After all these troubles, then the miracle appeared. And God comes to the scene and says that, take your son, your only son, the one you love. God will always make sure that you will not make a mistake. Because if he just says, take your son, you go and take Ishmael. And go and sacrifice him. For me, the, 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 the annoying part is that go. I will show you the mountain where you sacrifice him. Hallelujah. And Abraham obeyed. Took this boy. And the boy was following. I'm sure the boy is like my son, Brian. He won't keep quiet. This is the firewood. This is this. So where is the lamp? He's not keeping quiet. And Abraham was was battling this thing in his spirit. He was thinking about the wife. What is he going to tell this woman back? That God said we should kill this son. I was telling myself, then I go home and tell my wife that God said I, I didn't come back with Brian. Where is Brian? Oh. <laughs> God God said <laughs> That will be the end of your marriage. That your foolishness. <laughs> Hallelujah. You brought this your madness here. That will be the end of the marriage. Hallelujah. Major, major test. Serious issue. But Abraham obeyed. Tell somebody obey. 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 When Abraham was about sacrificing this boy, then God showed up. And God said, now I know you fear me. He got to his serious soul. After all that Abraham went through, now before he said, now I know you fear me. So God is looking at you. He's seeing that you don't fear him because you are not obeying. Hallelujah. You are not obeying anything. Come to church early, you won't come. Come and pray, you won't pray. Read your Bible, you won't read. Fast. Why dodge? 21 days. The last time you did only 3 days. 21 days that we are all been suffering. You did only 3 days. Hallelujah. Even that you wanted us to clap for you. Hallelujah. May I suggest to you that your inability to obey God's word is a clear message that you don't fear him. Hallelujah. You don't fear God though. If you fear, you would have changed by now. So when God saw that, listen to God in verse 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham the second time from heaven, heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. Next verse. 17. I will bless you and multiply. In multiplying, I will multiply you, your descendants, as the stars of heaven and as the sand is on the seashore. Your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies after the obedience. Hallelujah. When you move on, And in your offering shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my 
voice. Not because you were confessing and talking and jumping about. Because you obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Are you getting me at all? So Abraham didn't struggle. He knew that the gift came from God. So when God asked, he was willing to give. And I say that one of the areas you can prove your love and your dependence on God is in the area of your giving. Hallelujah. Your tithes, your offerings, your giving. Your giving is a major demonstration of your faith and trust in God. It's a great sign of your obedience. Hallelujah. It's a great sign of your obedience. Hallelujah. Because God will always test you. I remember I've, I've been praying that Lord, I want to be able to be giving cars. Bless me. And then God showed up. He said you should give one of your cars. God, the only pray you show up. Your problem is that you are not hearing. Or you pretend that you are not hearing. And really, that was actually our only car. Because the other one, my, the company has an interest in it. And you must decide to do what you hear. Hallelujah. You, when God speaks, you say, not lie. It's not God. Me, I can hear God. I can hear God. When God speaks, I hear your problem is that you are not hearing God. And God told me that for you to obey him, you must be sensitive. You must be hot. Sensitive. You must be hot. Sensitive. God always speaks. Your problem is that you are not sensitive to catch it. You are not picking the things. So you can't obey. Hallelujah. God tells you something. And you are not quick enough. Hallelujah. You are not sharp enough to pick it. So you can't obey. May you be sensitive. Hallelujah. I say may you be sensitive. God is always up to something. The problem is we are not aggressive enough. And God is speaking all the time. Our problem is that we are not sensitive enough to hear and obey. Hallelujah. May you be aggressive. May you be obedient. May you be aggressive in faith. Aggressive in faith. Aggressive in faith. God told me the reason why many churches can't grow is that they are not aggressive. The ones that are growing, they are very aggressive. They are gra gra. Hallelujah. They are aggressive. All the things I do, I do them by faith, by aggression. Whether it's there or not, it shall show up. Hallelujah. It shall show up. You, you are waiting for everything to be fine. When I was 27 years, I married. Where I'm living now, my porch is as big as my hall, chamber, and porch that I was staying. When I got married, your problem is that you don't have an aggressive faith. You are waiting. You are living in two bedroom apartment. I don't know what you are waiting for, young man. Maybe Jesus will come and meet you. Hallelujah. God has told you to start the business. I don't know what you are waiting for. Be aggressive, obey Him. Has he said it? The woman said that if I may but touch the hem of his garment. So she moved. She moved. You too. Move. I say move. Move. We want to actualize the blessings of Abraham. You can't do that sitting down. And say you are confessing. No, it doesn't work like that. You must be aggressive. The devil must know that you are very serious. This is a very serious address. Hallelujah. Then he will leave you alone. May we be aggressive. 
Brother, you are the man in the house. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Start building on that land. Be aggressive. Hallelujah. Take calculation. Take iron rods. Calculate all. Be aggressive. It doesn't mean there is anything there. Just be aggressive. Hallelujah. You want to preach? Just be aggressive. Find some place and preach. Be aggressive. Hallelujah. Just do it. Just do it. Sister, this brother is looking at you. And you are just looking at this brother. When he goes to marry, then you are here that he's gotten broken heart. Be aggressive small. Hallelujah. Let her know of certainty that you are available. You are behaving as if you are not available. When we go somewhere else, then you are angry. Hallelujah. Be hot. Aggressive small. As I end, I just want us to sing this song. And then I'll pronounce a blessing over you. It was written by John Samis. He was a businessman and a preacher. I think I want to have his grace. Trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord. I want to sing it all the stanzas take the word seriously after we sing all of it i'll pronounce a blessing and we are done can you please be on your feet when we walk with if you can project it it will be useful to us in the light of his word what a glory he shares on our way what a glory while we do his good will we do his good he abides with us still he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey and with all who will trust and obey now sing it to yourself trust and obey trust and there is no other way for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey the next verse says not a shadow can rise not the shadow can not a cloud in the skies not a cloud in the sky but his smile quickly drives it away. Drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear. Not a doubt nor a fear. Not a sigh or a, a tear. Not a tie nor a tear. Can abide while we trust and obey. Can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus But to trust and obey Not a burden we bear Not a burden we bear Not a sorrow we share Not a sorrow but our toil he does our richly repay. Toil, he doth repay. Not a grief or a loss. Not a, grief, nor a loss. Not a frown or a cross. Not a frown nor a cross. But is blessed if we trust and obey. But is blessed if we trust, trust and obey. Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus But to trust and hope 
but we never can prove. The delight of his love until all on the altar we lay. On the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Sing, trust, and obey. For there's no other way. Finally, he says, then in fellowship suite, we will sit at his feet or walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet and will walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his faith to shine upon you may the Lord make you a partaker of the Abrahamic covenant may you enjoy the blessings that he promised Abraham that you will be blessed and you become a blessing may the sun not smite thee by day nor the moon by night may the Lord bless your going out and your coming in may the Lord bless your basket and your kneading bowl May the Lord open the windows above your head and cause a rain to come upon you. May you know of the blessings of the Lord. No matter the place you are now, I declare as a servant of God that the Most High God will change your situation. No matter where you are now, the Lord will give you a testimony. No matter where you are now, the Lord will lift you up and exalt you. If I've ever been called and anointed by God, may your situation change. May your testimony of God, may your testimony be a, a story that many will listen to. May you share your testimony and lives will be transformed. The same God that took me and brought me this far, I declare by that same God that you not remain where you are. I declare by that same God that brought me where I am now. That put shoes on my feet. When I had no shoe. The same God that fed me. When I was hungry. The same God that kept me from destruction. And from evil men. And preserved my life from wicked people. May the same God save you. The same God that gave me an inheritance among the saints. I pray that the same God will bless you. I pray that the same God will honor you. I pray that the same God will lift up your head. You have a testimony. Your mockers will not mock you. I say your mockers will not mock you. God will turn your situation around. You shall be a giver and not a borrower. You shall be a giver. 
many shall be blessed because of you i declare over your head that if the blessings of abraham are true may it come upon this house if the blessings of abraham are true may it come over this house if the blessings of abraham are true may people in this house have enough in the name of jesus may somebody from this house buy an aeroplane i say may somebody from this house buy a private jet may somebody from this house build hundred churches in the name of jesus may somebody from this house build orphanages may somebody from this house build schools for free build houses and house the homeless if the god of abraham is true may somebody from this house be anointed with global influence if the god of abraham is true may somebody from this house become an international sensation may we hear of you because the god of abraham is still in the house i declare you blessed in jesus name say amen thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.